um, hello everyone. Uh, let me begin by telling you how nice it is to be here. So, uh, my name is Nabil Iqbal. I'm a theoretical physicist who works at Durham University in the UK. And I'm here to answer some questions that I was given by the organizers about gravity. So, the first question that I was given was, what's wrong with Newton's law of gravity? Okay, so let's think about this. Let me begin by just reminding everyone what Newton's law of gravity is. So Newton's law of gravity says the following thing. It says that if you have two objects, so say two masses with masses m1 and m2, then these two things will feel a force that attracts them towards each other. Okay. In other words, every mass in the universe attracts every other mass. All right. That's Newton's law of gravity. And in fact, there's a formula for, um, for the force that these two things feel. If the two of them are separated by a distance r, then the force between them is given by Newton's constant times m1 times m2 divided by r squared. Okay? So, this here is Newton's law of gravity. Okay, now, uh, what's, that's, that's fine. And um, what's, what is this good for? Well, you know, this really describes pretty much all obvious effects of gravity that you can see around you. If you care, for example, about how strongly gravity is holding you against the Earth, or the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, or, you know, Neptune, Pluto around the Sun, all of these things you can figure out pretty well from Newton's law of gravity. But there is um, something that is a little bit wrong with it. And let me not tell you what that is. It's a sort of conceptual problem with Newton's law of gravity. And the issue is that Newton's law of gravity doesn't work with special relativity. Okay, so that's really the problem. Now, what is special relativity? Well, the truth is, special relativity is a really, really big subject, and I don't think I have time to explain it to you in these, uh, these short videos. So let me just give you a, a brief overview of what it means. Special relativity is the idea that the laws of physics are the same even if you're moving. Okay? That's pretty much it. And by moving, I mean moving at a constant speed, but let's not worry about the details. So, you know, this, this sounds very reasonable, right? I mean, like, say, say you know, you're, you're in a spaceship, and the spaceship is moving at some constant speed, special relativity just says that everything happening in the spaceship, all the laws of physics that you know and love, they still work inside the spaceship the same way. Okay, that's it. And, um, you know, that, that, that sounds very reasonable, but it has very, very, very profound consequences. Okay? So sadly, I don't have time to get into what all those consequences are, but they're kind of profound, and what they end up telling you at the end of the day, if you think about them hard enough, is that space and time, okay, which seem very different in everyday life, okay, I mean space is like space, time is what's ticking as I talk, that these two things are actually different aspects of the same idea, okay? In fact, you can think about space and time sort of mixing into each other in some deep way. And um, that's what special relativity tells us. Now, um, again, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't really explain what this means in any more detail due to lack of time. But what I will say is that one of the consequences of special relativity is that there is a speed limit in the universe. Okay? And that speed limit is the speed of light. Okay, which we normally call c, this is very, very fast. It is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is insanely fast. But when I say speed limit, I, I really mean it. I mean, there is absolutely no way that you can go faster than this speed limit. Okay? No matter how powerful your rocket, no matter how strongly you try, you will never be able to go faster than the speed of light. Not only that, not only can you not go faster, it's also a fact that information cannot be transmitted faster than the speed of light. Okay? 
that is what the speed of light means. Okay, that even information can't go faster than this. Okay, now um, that's fine, but let's go back and remember what Newton's law of gravity is telling us. What Newton's law of gravity says is, one second, what Newton's law of gravity says is that there's a force between two objects and that force goes like r squared. But you'll notice there's something missing in this expression. You see that the expression is instantaneous. Okay. Well, what do I mean by that when I say it's instantaneous? I mean there's no times in this expression. Okay. So this actually isn't compatible with the idea that nothing can go faster than light. So let me explain why. Let me imagine that uh, I'm sitting here, okay? And I'm sitting here, by sitting here, I mean that I have a large mass, which I'm calling M1. And let me suppose my friend is here, okay? And my friend uh, has a mass, which I'm gonna call little m. Okay, now my friend will feel a force pulling them towards this mass here, all right? Now, what is that force? Well, there's a formula for the force, which I wrote down earlier. The force is g times m1m over r squared. Now, suppose I suddenly take this and I make this twice as heavy, okay? So m1 becomes much, much bigger. It becomes 2m1. Then well, what happens to the force? Okay, well, the force will become bigger. It will become 2g m1m over r squared. But hang on, something is wrong with that because then this friend over here will feel the new force instantly. Okay? In other words, the information about this mass getting bigger has gone from here to here instantly. and not at the speed of light. So that can't be, okay? So that's what I mean when I say that this formula right here isn't actually compatible with special relativity. The problem is that Newton's law doesn't care about this speed limit, okay? Newton's law doesn't respect this principle of special relativity. And there are many, many fancier ways to say this, but the basic upshot is that Newton and relativity don't fit well together. Okay. Okay. So that's the basic idea. And um, now we should think about how we can solve this problem. Okay. So um, the next question that I was asked is, what does Einstein's general theory of relativity say to prove Newton's law wrong? Or in other words, let me put it this way. What does Einstein do to fix this? Okay. Okay. So it turns out that um, there is a way to fix this, but it's rather deep. Okay. And Einstein, of course, figured this out. And the idea is, uh, is very profound. The main point is the following. What Einstein said is that the thing that we normally think of as gravity is actually the curvature of space and time. Okay, so this is a, um, a radical and extremely dramatic idea, okay? So let me try to explain how this thing can possibly be true, okay? So before getting into the curvature of space and time, let me just say a few words about what space and time look like. So I'm gonna try to draw a picture 
Okay. So here's a picture. So I want you to imagine that on the y-axis of this is time. Okay. And on the x-axis over here is, uh, is space. In fact, when I say space, what I actually mean is, is this direction. Okay, the direction that is up uh, for me. Okay, so up is that direction, which I've drawn sideways. Forgive me, there'll be a reason why in a second. Okay, so now let's imagine the following thing. Suppose I'm just sitting here and not moving. I, I am not moving into the air. Okay, I'm just sitting here. What does my trajectory look like in this picture? Well, you know, I'm just sitting here. I'm not moving in time. So, in other words, my trajectory looks like this. Okay? This is me. Okay. Now, let me um, do something different. Let me take this uh, strange little ball here and throw this into the air. Okay? So if I throw it into the air, it goes like this. That worked. And so what does this trajectory look like? Well, it goes a little bit away from me, okay? And then it comes to a halt at some height, and then it comes down again. Okay? So this is the trajectory of the ball. Notice that the, the two things met again, right? I threw it into the air, it went up, and it came back, and I grabbed it again. Okay? So this is a picture of space and time. Okay, everyone with me so far? I'm going to assume that you are. Now, I want you for a second to forget about this picture of space and time and imagine a totally different problem. Imagine the surface of the Earth. Okay. So here's the surface of the Earth, which I won't try to draw properly. But imagine that you live on the this surface of this Earth but imagine it's many, many years ago, and people don't know that the Earth is round. And you're trying to prove that the Earth is round. In other words, that the surface of the Earth is curved. How do you do it? Well, one thing that you could do is, you could take two ships and start sailing on the surface of the Earth. Notice that even if you try to sail in a straight line, these two paths will eventually meet again at some point. Okay. In other words, if I take this picture and I sort of flatten it out, let me call this direction east and this direction north, then these two things look like this. Okay. It's two straight lines that go apart and meet again, and they meet again because the surface of the Earth is curved. So notice what's happening now, of course, the point is, let's compare this to this picture I just drew of gravity. Over here is a picture of space and time, and because of gravity, two paths that started out diverging, like me and this ball, eventually met up again. And it's exactly the same idea as if you have two paths on the surface of the Earth that begin to diverge and meet up again. This is meant to give you an idea of the indication that you can imagine that gravity is really the same thing as the curvature of space and time. Okay. So this idea is what is called Einstein's theory of general relativity. Okay. It's, a, it's a rather deep concept, and it has really had really profound implications on how we think about the universe. So what does it mean? What it means is, for example, every time you have a mass, that mass will actually curve the space around it in some way, and we have equations that describe how that curvature works. Okay. This curvature has really profound consequences. It means, in particular, that if you stand close to a mass, then you will notice that time for you ticks more slowly. 
close to a heavy object. Okay, so that's what I mean when mass is curve space and time. So the really interesting thing is that even though this sounds completely different from Newton's law of gravity, it ends up reducing to it in a particular limit. In other words, if you take Einstein's theory and you ask the same question, something like, you know, how quickly do two things fall towards each other, what you find is that the force between them is the same as Newton's law plus an extra bit. Okay? And this extra bit turns out to be very, very small when the things are far apart from each other, but it gets bigger and bigger and bigger when the two become close to each other. All right? And so Einstein's theory of gravity predicts a very specific correction to Newton's law, to the force between two objects, which you can calculate and go through, but which I'm not going to do here um, in this short video. Okay? Now, um, I haven't really explained to you how this solves the initial problem that I described, which is that the um, Newton's law of gravity seems to work instantly. So you can ask again, what if I had an object here and someone was standing far away and then I took this mass and I suddenly changed it and made it twice that, okay? Well, you, you can't quite do that actually in general relativity, but imagine that you could. Imagine that you did something violent here and you changed this mass in some dramatic way. In Newton's theory of gravity, the information would go instantly outwards, but that is not the case in Einstein's theory of gravity. In Einstein's theory of gravity, if you make some sort of change, what actually happens is it makes what's called a gravitational wave. Okay? And that gravitational wave doesn't go instantly. A gravitational wave goes at the speed of light. Okay? And eventually, over here, my friend will see this signal and will know that something has happened, but it won't happen instantly. So um, this, this is actually a very interesting fact because it turns out very recently, in the last five years or so, we have been able to detect gravitational waves on Earth. In other words, the sort of thing that happens is you can have two giant objects in the sky that will collide and make some giant black hole. This is a very violent thing which sends out gravitational waves and all of us sitting here on Earth can detect those waves in gravitational wave observatories. So this is a very exciting time to be thinking about gravitational waves. Okay, thank you everyone. It's been very nice being here. Um, take care.